Good Sunday morning, Northeast Ohio. As you enjoy your holiday weekend, the presidential hopefuls are crisscrossing the early voting states, especially those who carry the title senator. They got jury duty on Tuesday as the impeachment process kicked off this week with almost a sacramental feel. The gravity of the moment on display in the Senate as Chief Justice John Roberts first took his own oath before administering one to the members who one by one signed an oath book formally beginning this presidential impeachment process. The last to administer such an oath was Chief Justice William Rehnquist nearly two decades ago. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine was a Senate juror in that trial. His eventual guilty vote, he told me, came after much soul searching. I took the position then that I think it was the right position, that I needed to study all the evidence, I needed to listen to all the facts. I didn't make a decision until the trial itself was, was over with. Um, I spent hundreds and hundreds of hours on that, uh, called it like I saw it, made the best decision I could. Ohio's current U.S. Senators were both in the House in 1998. They vowed as well to take their role seriously. I know what my job is now. There are 100 jurors. Our job is to be unbiased. It's not to listen to our friends or to take our own uh, opinion of Donald Trump, positive or negative. The, our job is to listen to the evidence. Evidence that he believes must include witnesses. If you're in a trial in Cuyahoga County or Lake or Medina County, you need witnesses. We need these witnesses that Senator McConnell needs to have come in. And then we make the decision based on the evidence only, not on a political view or not on our attitude towards the president. Senator Rob Portman tells me he supports the idea of witnesses if senators feel they are needed after hearing the evidence. I mean, I think the Senate ought to, ought to hear both sides. If at the end of that, as happened in the Clinton impeachment, there's a, additional information needed, then we could have additional testimony coming from other witnesses. Well, Ohio, we know, is the cradle of presidents with the state laying claim to eight commanders in chief. And that fact, in a roundabout way, plays a role in Ohio impeachment history. For this lesson in Impeachment 101, we go back to that very first presidential impeachment trial in 1868 of President Andrew Johnson. It was presided over as dictated by the Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, a fellow by the name of Salmon Chase, who, by the way, before joining the court, happened to have served as the 23rd governor of the state of Ohio. Although Chase ran for president, he's not the presidential connection in this tale. Ohio's two senator jurors in 1868 were John Sherman of Sherman Antitrust fame and Benjamin Wade. Senator Sherman and Wade would both vote to convict and remove President Johnson from office. But for Senator Wade, there may have been an underlying motive. You see, when then Vice President Johnson became president after the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, he was not constitutionally required to appoint a new vice president. And he didn't. So pop quiz time. If you don't have a president or vice president, who would next be in line to lead? Speaker of the House. The Speaker of the House is correct since 1947. Before that, the answer would have been Senate President Pro Tem, who in 1868 happened to be Ashley Buell County's own Benjamin Wade. And that vote to convict President Johnson was 35-19, just shy of the 36 needed to remove him from office, meaning Senator Wade, whose final resting place is just east of Cleveland and Jefferson, was only one vote shy from being the state's ninth tie to the presidency. Just an interesting tidbit we thought we'd share. With Democracy 2020, I'm John Kasich. Enjoy your Sunday.